Hello everyone. In this second part dedicated to texts and color, after having seen how to style our text in the first part, we will see how to define the font, and how to align our texts in their spaces. First, how can we choose the display font? Yes, unfortunately by default your text will be displayed by the host browser's default font. Fortunately, we can change the display font, and force the one we want. But beware, not all fonts are free of rights, and therefore, do not use just any fonts. Base, there is a series of fonts, which are generally implemented, and recognized by all browsers. Here is a list of these fonts. Arial, Arial Black, Comic Sans MS, Korean U, Georgia, Impact, Time New Roman, Trebuchet MS, Verbe, and the two default fonts, Serif, and, Sans Serif. The difference between these last two, is the little linking tabs at the bottom of the letters, which the serif font has, and which the sans serif does not. Alright, so let's see how we can set the font for an element on our site. We're going to change the font of our main title, and we're going to put it in Arial Black. To do this, we are going to use the function, font family, which will have as its value the name of the desired font. So let's open our index and style pages in our editor. And let's go into the CSS code. Our title is in the H1 marker, which is already included in our code, so we'll add a new function to it. So we add the function font family in the first line, thus shifting the function font size down in second position. And we give the value Arial Black to the function font family. A tip, in order not to have problems with some browsers, if your font contains spaces, as is the case for Arial Black, write its name in quotes. Let's save the CSS code, and test it in our browser. Indeed, our main title is now written in Arial Black, while the rest is still written with the default font. Good, but that only gives us a limited choice of fonts. We would like to be able to personalize our site a little more, with a more personal font. It's possible. For this, I recommend two sites, which will allow you to download royalty-free fonts, which are, fontquirrel.com, and, defint.com. Good, but that's not all, indeed, there are several formats for a font, and these do not work on all browsers. Here are the different common formats, and browsers where they work. The format, TTF, for, TrueType font, which works on all browsers, except versions prior to IE9. The format, EOT, for, Embedded Open Type, which only works on Internet Explorer, this is the format produced by Microsoft. The format, OTF, for, Open Type font. It does not work on Internet Explorer. The format, SVG, which is the format of iPhones and iPads. And the format, WAF, for, Web Open Font Format, which is a format designed for the web, and works on all browsers. You're going to say to me, Hella, madam, that's a bunch of different files. We're going to have to use them all. No, don't worry. First, we should have the WAF Format, which works on almost all browsers, and, we can add the other formats to it, if we have them. The fontquirrel.com site offers you a small tool which will allow you to create the WAF and WAF2 format from your font and, as a bonus, will give you the code to insert it into your site. Huh? Do you need a code to insert a font? Hey yes, if you use a personal font, there's a good chance that the host browser doesn't have it. So, first, we're going to have to create some code that will force the host browser to download your font and a second to make it use it. Well, for example, I uploaded the font, Blackout, which I want to use for my title. It is only available in format, OTF. Then, using the creation tool on Font Squirrel, I created the formats, WAF and WAF2. I also received the CSS code to insert my font. I put the three font files, namely, the two WAFs and the OTF, in the subfolder, content, of our site. I will now show you the complete insertion code, it allows the host browser, including older versions of Internet Explorer, to choose the format it can read.
Here he could choose between all formats. Well, let's make it a bit simpler, as we only have three formats. And therefore, we are going to insert the following code, in the first line of the CSS code, like this. We have a special marker name, at font hyphen face, which will allow to define the name of the font, which we will use in the code to define the font of an element, and, which will allow the browser to choose the one we want and can read. And, inside the braces, a sequence of functions. The first, font family, will set the name of your font to its value. Then we have the function, scr, which defines the locations of the font files with their values in URL. I put the fonts in the content subfolder, and so, we need to add that path in the URL. They are followed by their formats. You will notice that it is a comma which separates the different lines of URLs, and that the last one ends with a semicolon. Alright, so here's the part to set our font, but, the host browser might refuse to download, or display our font. We are going to overcome this, in the function which defines the font to be used in a marker, here, in our h1 marker. We are simply going to put a possible font sequence, separated each time by a comma, generally, three different fonts, and, lastly, the default font, that is, serif, or, sans serif. So I'm going to give the following. First, our custom font. Second, Arial Black. Third, Inverbe. And finally, Sans Serif. So, the host browser will first use our font. If it can't download it, or recognize it, it will switch to Arial Black. If not yet, to Verbe. And if still not, to the default Sans Serif font. That's it. We can save our code, and test it in our browser. Now that you know how to use a custom font, you can define the font of your choice, for the title, but also for your various texts. Well, this big part being seen, let's see now, how we can align our text in its place. At the moment, our text does not yet have a precise location, and is displayed at the top and left of our page. In the next part, we will start defining some frames, in which we will place the different parts of our page. Let's just see how we can change the location of our texts. There are four possibilities. First, left alignment, which is the default alignment, and pastes each sentence to the left, leaving space at the end of the sentence to the right. Second, center alignment, which will center our sentences with the same space on the left and on the right. Third, Right alignment, which will stick our sentences to the right, leaving the space at the start of the sentence to the left. And, lastly, justified alignment, which goes as far as possible, placing equal spaces between each word, so that the sentence fills all the available space. This is the format used in all newspapers. We are going to use the function text align, with the desired value, to be able to define the alignment of our different texts. These values are, left, for left alignment, center, for centered alignment, right, for right alignment, and, justify, for justified alignment. In our site, our main title must be centered in the banner, so we add the function, text align, with the value, center, for the h1 marker. And the presentation text will be on the right, or, we add to the P marker, the function, text align, with the value, right. Let's save our code, and see the result in our browser. Well, we'll see later, that we can also align text with an image, like in this example. We have reached the end of this second part, devoted to texts and color. In the next part, we will see how to give color to our site, to the texts, and to the different backgrounds, including how to put a background image. Thank you for your attention. Katerina and Patrick